Well, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Mr. Gardner. Look, let's make sure we all understand exactly what my amendment does. My amendment doesn't roll back any regulation that currently exists. My amendment doesn't strike any money for any agency that is currently looking at, at the, uh, the, how the ocean works. My amendment does nothing like that. My amendment specifically says that if this process is gonna be done, that it's gonna start where the Constitution says it starts. It starts in the United States Congress. Now, Mr. Farr talked a few minutes ago about how this was already a, a, an authorized activity. And, he, and to that extent, he introduced in the 111th Congress, it was H.R. 21. He introduced on January 6, 2009. That has not become law. There has never been an appropriation that has been issued to support that. On the other hand, here's what the executive order does do. It creates, let me see if I can find the, it creates 10 new national policies, nine new national priority objectives, nine new strategic action plans, seven new national goals for coastal marine spatial planning, 12 new guiding principles for coastal marine spatial planning. In addition, the agencies are advised to evaluate necessary and appropriate legislative solutions or changes to regulations to address the constraints. That, my friends, did not start in the United States Congress pursuant to the Constitution. Now, it's been said this is not gonna cause any additional regulation. It's been said this is not really ocean zoning. Well, let me give you an example of one of the things that requires the to happen. It requires the Department of Transportation to inventory and evaluate best management practices to address stormwater runoff from federal aid, highway, from the federal aid highway system. It, um, let's see, what are some of the other ones that are interesting here? It, it provides, in terms of, uh, it says it's not zoning, where people say it's not zoning, it says CMSP allows for comprehensive, a comprehensive look at multiple sector demands which would provide a more complete evaluation of cumulative effects. This ultimately is intended to result in protection of areas that are essential for the resiliency and maintenance of a healthy ecosystem, services, and biological diversity. I've got no problems doing that, but as long as the Congress authorizes it and then the Congress appropriates the money to do so. The Constitution doesn't say that the President's king and under the executive orders he can do whatever he wants to. Not yet. This action from Colorado controls the time. What's that? Okay. This action will identify and assess high quality ocean and coastal waters and the waters that drain into them and establish or modify existing water quality monitoring protocols and programs. That sounds like a regulation to me. That's government speak for regulation. This executive order is an overreach. This the the cost of this executive order is being hidden. The National Ocean Council specifically asked agencies to tell us what this is gonna cost, and the agencies have specific, specifically refused to comply. The Natural Resources Committee in these hearings has specifically asked for the cost of this program, and we've specifically been ignored. Now, if these agencies are spending this money to implement this policy, this program, this executive order, where are they taking it from? What legislatively authorized activities are not being done and what appropriated dollars are being used that from their appropriated function for something else? What's going on? There are 83 interest groups in this country that are not the types that you would not like. It includes folks like the cattlemen and the farmers that think that this is an overreach, that think that this could damage our way of life. The and all yield? they want is to have a clear and transparent and constitutional process for this to be carried out. Will the and gentleman that, yield? 